All righty, we got the trailer hooked up. Oh, it's chilly. And down to Orlando, it's beautiful, but quite quite cold for me. That's a Floridian day here. But anyway, we're heading down to Orlando. We're going to pick up the Subaru from Paint. I haven't even seen it yet. Like, I haven't even seen really pictures of it or anything. So it's gonna be new to me and exciting and a surprise. So let's get going. Man, this is the least busy I have ever seen the turnpike. Ever. I haven't had to touch the brakes or change my speed. I love it. Which was like this all the time. All right, we made it to Adams. I have looked at it for about three seconds because I couldn't help myself, but check it out. Look at that. It's crazy because like seeing the color before, where the clear coat was peeling before, obviously it looked bad, but where the peel clear coat wasn't peeling, you know, it was like more of like a, it's a different color. It didn't look anywhere near this good. It, yeah, orangey kind of. Oh. Like orangey and uh, like pale, whereas this is like this beautiful, bright red that's deep and oh this is such a nice color you know I, I like the color and i wasn't i didn't like i didn't choose to stay with the the oem color because it was like my favorite color in the world i chose because it was the simplest and easiest because the car was painted that color to begin with so no jams or anything needed to be painted but now that i see it painted like just look at this color i hope the camera brings it out because you know it looks it just looks amazing Dude, it looks so good. This is sweet. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm definitely hyped with it. I mean, this color, like, I like doing all kinds of different colors and something with a real deep pearl and just a real deep, nice red. Yeah. It was fun to spray. It looks amazing. I, I didn't watch the painting videos because I wanted to be surprised when I saw it. So I saw the thumbnail and I had to quickly look away so I, I would get the full surprised effect when I got here. But just, oh, man. Look at it. It just like leveled this car up like 20 times. You know, like it was a neat yeah. little car, but now it's like a really nice looking neat little car. And for what the car is, for it being like a rally car, like a beat on car, I think the finish is perfect. Oh yeah, we could yeah. We went through in wet sand and got it perfectly flat. I yeah, think no, way, way too much work for, right. for this car. Cause it, it is a track car. I mean, that's the goal, track car daily. Like he's probably gonna get rock chips on the trailer on the way home. <laughs> yeah, it don't matter. <laughs> you know, exactly. And then without sand, like completely wet sanding it, there's a lot more clear, so it's gonna hold up a little. Oh, bit better, true. It's hold up the dirt and debris a little bit better. So I think for what the car is, I think it's good. Yeah, no, I, th I mean I think it looks great, Thank but you know me, I'm not super picky. Right. I'd, ra I'd honestly rather it it not be perfect, because then right. I I don't have to feel as bad about driving and using it. And that was my mindset the whole time too. You know that you're gonna be out there, you're gonna be driving, and you're gonna be using it. Stuff's gonna happen, and that's just part of it. When cars become too perfect and they're no longer fun. Yeah, to me, it's just not, it, there's no point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. those side moldings. Yeah. yeah, that's right. The body whatever. Is Bo body side molding, yeah. So he got rid of the body side molding line here. Uh, it looks a lot better like that, too. I think the JDM ones come, or some come. I'm not too sure which ones come, but I know some of them come without it, and I think that looks so much Yeah, better. I agree. My vet had them, like, similar, and I uh -huh. took them off, and it looked way better. Yeah. But it's so much cleaner. in the side? No. Yeah, see, it doesn't want the whole yeah. thing to shake them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I almost forgot about that part. Yeah. Like, I don't know why they wouldn't have just left this nice line from the factory. Oh, yeah, you can really see the color up here because of the, like, you've got the multi layers of white. You've got the white shining directly down. You can see all the pearl and then the white. The little shadows, you can see the depth of the color. Oh, man, it just looks so good. I can't wait to drive it now. So I got to fix the turbo gasket, so we'll do that today or later tonight or tomorrow or something, and then go rip this thing around with the new paint. Paint job, the entire thing depends on the owner from start to finish. Like when people are real easy going, it makes my job come out a lot better. It makes it a lot more easy for me and a lot more relaxing and I could just focus on the car. And Taylor, he, he's always like that. <laughs> yeah. He's like the best person to paint for. Because I, he's really like, dude, whatever. Because he knows what it takes to do stuff exactly. like that. When people have their expectations way up here and then they're paying, it gets a little bit hairy. And yeah, yeah, they want to pay nothing right. for like a perfect, you know, spending 30 hours getting every last speck out. You know, it's just, it's not, to me, it's pointless. You know, I mean, even, even still, it looks so nice. I'm like, man, I got to take this thing home on the trailer. I got a rock chip on the way here. This thing's going to get rock chips. That's, that's depressing. It makes me sad. So what are you, what are you you're working on this thing? Yeah, man, I'm actually getting this thing torn down because I have this gigantic, grandiose idea. 
<laughs> everything from here and put it in my 1988 Accord. That like is gonna be six, sick. Like, like a JDM Fox Body Mustang or something along those lines. That is gonna be sick. So the 5.7 with the T56. Oh, behind. you got it all out already. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. And Side now, note, before we get into this. Yeah, because while you're here, if you don't mind helping me out, because I'm oh, yeah, of course. know what parts of I course. need to get or what I should get. Yeah, no, that's that's cake. Done it a bunch of times. But I just wanted to say, if you guys want to see the whole painting process, if you haven't been following along already, I know a lot of you have, uh, link down below to Adam's channel. He covered it all. Like I said, the only ones I haven't watched is the actual paint because I wanted to be surprised. But uh, his videos are good. Even my girlfriend's been watching them and enjoying them. She was the one who texted me. She's like, the paint looks yeah. so good. I was like, don't tell me. Don't tell me about it. That is really genuine. It's really cool to hear. I appreciate <laughs> she that. likes them. That's so cool. So definitely check out Adam's channel. Adam's always a huge help getting cars painted. He is the paint plug. Thank you. It, like you said, it's like we work together well because yeah. I don't have unrealistic expectations and I'm like, do your thing and then you're good at doing your thing. It works great. Cool, man. I'm hyped. Glad to do it and I'm looking forward to whatever's next. That truck's, oh, yeah. The truck's a little bit too big to fit in over Yeah. There. It looks good. Yeah. Though. No, the truck, the, all my cars have crappy paint to be honest. The RX-7. <laughs> but yeah, so you're putting this in... A Accord, a 1988. Accord, Accord. Why do I keep thinking it's a prelude? It looks like a prelude. <laughs> yeah, let's it's see the white it. one right there. I want to see it. Oh yeah, because it, it, it looks... It looks like a 886. Yeah, like a Celica Supra or... That's kind of crazy. I didn't even know those existed. Yeah, I, a lot of people don't. You know, when they see them, they think, they think all the time it's an 886 yeah. or like a first-time Supra or something. Yeah, that's, like that. what it, that's what it looks like. So like it definitely looks like you got room in the bay for it. Yeah, dude, every, and I took a whole bunch of measurements behind the scene, just anything and everything that I can think. I was searching for hurdles to say that this won't work and I couldn't find yeah. it this far. So yeah, I think it'll be fine. And I might have to notch the firewall a little bit different, but the way that I feel about it, if an LS can go into a Miata, yeah. it's going here. Yeah, so no, Miatas see. are tight. What are you going to do for rear end stuff, drivetrain wise? Um, Whatever's in the GTO. I'm gonna oh, okay. The, the That's perfect. The subframe, the tire, entire front subframe. And, Oh, there you go. Body to make yeah. And one thing that I found, the Accord frame rails actually sit up a little bit higher than the GTOs. So the subframe will sit. I just have to build to make it all lined up. Okay. It should be. I know it's yeah. better to say it than to do yeah, it. Yeah, but no, that's, that's a good way to do it because then you get, you know, essentially you're putting this body on a GTO more, more yeah. so than swapping the engine in. Right. And then mounts are handled. Steering is handled. Right. Every single thing is contained amongst the subframe yeah so, all you got to so, do is mount the subframe right i feel like i've done stuff that's harder even though this might be a little crazy yeah like, yeah really i know what you mean straightforward. it should be yeah i don't think it'll be too bad well that's dope that's gonna be a cool project yeah. so i'll do some do some crazy burnouts in here and that'll be cool there you go <laughs> all righty well it's time to load this thing up Look at that. It's so nice. Just when I was just driving it over here just now, like looking out over the hood and seeing nice paint, you know, because that's been one thing about this car. I'm like, I like this car, and it's like it's a pretty solid, nice little car. There's no rust, there's very minimal body dings and dents, but it, you know, kind of just looks like trash. Like it's clear coats peeling real bad, it kind of rattles and whatever. Whereas now it's like it's a sharp looking car. You know, it's like a night and day difference from what it was before. Oh man, look at just look at it. This is a good way to see it with all the sun on it. Oh man, I'm so hyped, dude. This looks so good. Huge thanks again to Adam. Yeah, man, of course. I was happy to do it. Again, the paint plug. Tons of awesome videos. Like I said, even my girlfriend watched them, so you should too. Should at least watch the paint one. So I'll link his channel below and I'll link yeah. the specific paint one of when he was laying down the paint for those of you who are too impatient to watch the series. <laughs> um, but again, huge thanks to Adam for everything. Always be in the paint plug. Tractor life. All right, we're going to get on the road. See you later, buddy. Okay. Thanks we'll again. Talk soon about yep. the LS. Yes, right. always. <laughs> See ya. But we're cruising through uh, the Barry area, and this is kind of where I grew up uh, when I first started driving and stuff. So like, I don't know, age 15 to 19-ish, I moved around a lot. Anyway, it brings back memories. I haven't been through this kind of area of DeBerry in a long time, and it, it's kind of weird to be back here. All right, we made it back home with the Subaru. Looking good. So last night we had a cold snap. It got down to about 28. And since we live in Florida and track our cars and stuff, uh, most of my stuff doesn't have coolant in it. Like my truck 
is I think the only thing that has coolant in it in the Sephiro, which only has coolant in it because I didn't change it. But every other car, I'm going to take on the track, so I fill them with water because if they spill, you're not supposed to have coolant in there. And, uh, you know, we live in Florida. It's not normally a problem, but it got below freezing. And though it probably wouldn't have mattered, I ended up, once I got home and unloaded the car, I ended up warming up every all of my cars to uh, just to get them up to operating temp so that they'd have longer before they got super cold overnight. Because it was, it was under, below freezing for like eight hours last night, which is real weird for us here in Florida. But anyway, I also had to push the Miata into the shop because I can't start it because I had to send my PMU wiring distribution module out. And uh, yeah, so I put it in here to keep it nice and toasty. But now we gotta move it back out, get the Subaru in here, get it up on the lift, and we can start pulling the exhaust off and try to fix our exhaust leak. And then hopefully go for a proper rip with no exhaust leak. That's the goal. The task at hand is to pull our header slash turbo manifold out. You can see I replaced this flex joint. Basically, uh, the old one exploded at the track, split wide open, so we had a massive exhaust leak, and it was before the turbo, so it wouldn't spool and whatever. So anyway, I, I welded that new V-band in, got that all set up, and then we put it all back together, and then now we've got a leak out of our flange going from our up pipe here to our turbo. So right between the two at the front, it's leaking. I, I tried taking it apart, copper spraying it, cleaning it. I don't know if we've got warped flanges or what's going on, but I've got a couple plans to try. So first thing we got to do is pull this unit out so we can swap the new gaskets in. All right, we've got everything done up here. We've got two bolts that go into the turbo flange. We'll have to get those from the top. So we'll drop it down, get those, and then try to snake it out. So you can see the black mark here where this was leaking. It was definitely leaking here. That's at the front between these two. Uh, but it looks like it was leaking back here too. Leaking everywhere. So I got two new ones. I'm trying to decide if I want to try the one first or just stack them. The reason for getting two and stacking them would be if the flange is warped, which I feel like it's got to be for how bad this was leaking. Give me some extra thickness to soak up that warpage. I'm gonna be real surprised that we don't have an exhaust leak by just changing the gasket. I really think we're gonna to have to do two, but we'll find out. Well, it doesn't seem to be leaking. It definitely isn't leaking between those two bolts as far as I can feel before you could literally just feel the air with your hand coming out. Um, and I felt around as much as I could. Obviously, it's hot while it's running. Uh, but I felt around as much as I could. I couldn't really find any other leaks. It looked like the, the gaskets were bolts to the head. Those showed signs of leaking. So I'm going to order some of those and replace those because those are easy enough to replace. And it seems like new gaskets did the job on this. So uh, still a few th more things to tidy up. I want to do a coolant uh, overflow. I think I have something lying around I could use. Or I'll order something. I want to make the battery tie down, get my air filter box back in. But before we do all that, I want to go drive it and uh, see how it is with the exhaust leak potentially fixed. Just from driving it out of the shop, it definitely seems like it has at least less of an exhaust leak. Uh, the only thing that sucks about having this car nice and painted is I'm afraid to mess it up. <laughs> I like my cars being a little beat up so I don't feel bad about scratching or denting them. 
We got our Mishimoto airbox shield deal back in, trying to keep basically the heat out of the intake from back there because we got the turbo right there. Uh, it's a little tricky because this is meant for a WRX because this is a WRX engine, but it fits it fits pretty good, honestly, for the fact that it's not meant for this car at all. All right, I ran to the store. I got myself some new wipers because mine were pretty toast. I used to buy the nice wipers, but they just wear out so fast anyway. I just buy the cheap ones now, and I've had better luck with them lately. Uh, I got a taillight bulb. had a taillight out. Fix that. Now we're gonna do the battery. I've got my beautiful tie down here. Uh, we are going to be revising this method. As much as I love the old ratchet strap, I couldn't find anything for a coolant overflow. I'm gonna have to order something for that because I don't have anything and I don't wanna use a bottle or something. I think that's like such a cop out. So anyway, pull this battery out, get the new battery in, mount it up properly. Terminals are on the wrong side. I like made a mental note too of where they were. I just didn't look at it when I was there. All right, well, the little J-hook kit I got did not come with one of these. So I used this Miata one, welded a nut to it. Should work. Thanks, Ben's used Miata parts. Thanks, Ben's used Miata parts. Dot com. HTTPS. Forward slash forward slash. All right, well, at least the battery's secure now. We gotta chop these guys off. All right, well, unfortunately, our new battery didn't work out, so I'll have to get a different new battery, one with the terminals on the correct side, but got it mounted, so that's good. And you can probably hear the Sephiro out there idling, so I put the battery in the Sephiro. I needed to buy one for it anyway, so it kind of worked out. So Mishimoto recently came out with turbo blankets, so I wanted to try this T25 one on here and see if I could get it to fit. It's not quite, you know, gonna be right for this turbo, but I feel like I can make it fit. Look at that. We're gonna need some safety wire, but man, that thing is thick. It's a beaut. Let's put it on. Or should I say, attempt to put it on. Probably gonna have to pull this wastegate actuator. Yeah, that's our one problem. It's the wastegate actuator. Let's see if we can get it under it. Come on. There we go. We're getting there. 
Oh, that's cool. They even give you the little spring things. We got it on there fitting decent. The wastegate actuator arm is, is really kind of screwing us over from it fitting nice and not looking so goofy because it's tucked around that. I guess I could cut for that and then hook the actuator back up. We'll leave it like this for now and move on. All right, so the last thing I want to do, this will be pretty interesting. So I was cruising Facebook Marketplace, like all bad decisions start with, and uh, came across this set of scales for super cheap. And I thought about it and I've been wanting to buy a set of scales for a while. Uh, I just can never justify it. Like I want to be able to corner balance my car and I really just want to know what some stuff weighs. I really want to know what my LS Miata weighs because I weighed it before the LS swap and I have the front to rear and everything. So I really wanted to see how that changed with the LS, but I don't really know anyone with scales. So there's no way for me to do that. So anyway, moral of the story is I wanted to buy a set for a while, but I couldn't justify shelling out 1200, 1300 bucks for a set. So I found this for super cheap and uh, yeah. Obviously, I couldn't resist, and now we have scales, so we can weigh all the cars. So we're gonna start with the Subaru, because it's inside. We'll weigh the Miata next time we bring it in the shop to work on it, but let's see what this thing weighs. Any guesses? Post your guesses in the comments below. No looking, no looking. Post them below. <laughs> all right, we got it zeroed. Not bad, 28.09. That's full interior, half a tank of gas. You can see why Subaru's understeer though. Yeah, 60% front, 40% rear. <laughs> that's pretty wild. That's definitely very front biased. I guess that's more standard for like front wheel drive cars and all wheel drive cars. I'm used to rear wheel drive cars being close to 50 to 50, most of them. 2809, not bad at all, man. Not bad at all, it's pretty even too. Uh, when I'm in it, it'll probably change a lot, so we'll need to corner balance this thing too. What I'm gonna need to do is build some stands for it, basically, so I can set the scales on top of some stands and then be able to get under the car and adjust the coil over the sway bar or whatever I need to do to get it where I want it without having to like lift it up, adjust it, bring it down, set it again, lift it up, adjust it, set it down. So anyway, that's super cool. I'm really excited to weigh more stuff. I wanna weigh the RX-7, the Miata, the Sephiro would be a fun one. Oh, I think these are rated to 1,100 pounds each, so I should be able to weigh my truck. I don't know, I nerd out about stuff like this. You know, there's so many cars where I've always wanted to know the weights from, and it's hard to rely on the internet. You don't know if that stuff's true or not. Because, I mean, I think it said that these are like 2,800, and that's with the stock motor, and this is a turbo motor, so it's got more stuff going on, and it's 2,809. And like I said, I mean, that's full interior, trunk, everything, everything. So. And I got a helmet back there. Let's let's take that out. Let's uh let's get a little more accurate here. Take the helmet out. 2806, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, that's enough fun for the past couple days. We got this thing back from paint. Fixed the exhaust leak, fixed some other stuff, got it running good, weighed it. I mean, I'm hyped, man. I'm hyped. So we got a few more little things to do to this car and then obviously bigger things playing down the road, but to, to get it tidied up, like rear camber plates, because I need to add some rear camber for both function and form, cooling over, you know, little stuff, little stuff. Anyway, we're gonna be working on the LS RX-7 and the LS Miata this week as well. We might even dive into the Sphero while we're waiting on parts for the Fummins build, so should be a fun week. I uh, hope to see you guys back. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I'll see you next time, hopefully. Goodbye. <laughs>